Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and welcome back to the final video of our After Effects Beginners course. In this video, we're going to finish things off with rendering and exporting, as well as a quick look into Adobe's dynamic link. So let's jump into it. Guys, congratulations! If you've made it this far into the course, you've learned the basics of how to work with videos in After Effects. But now you need to actually export your work so that you can send it off to be integrated into a larger video project or just to stand alone as it is. We're going to be going over two different methods of integration, just straight up exporting and also adding an After Effects file itself to a Premiere Pro project. So let's get into it. First off, you might notice that this project is a lot more complex than the previous ones we've been going over. This is because I'm going to be using a couple of specific examples as we go through this video. To render out your After Effects project, you need to identify your project and how long it lasts. Whatever composition you find yourself currently in, that's the composition that you would export if you began the process. So for example, if we dove into one of our pre-comps, we would only be able to see this if we exported it from here. We actually want to go back into our topmost composition so that our entire project is being accounted for. If you know which composition was your starting one, then you can just select it and go from there. But if you can't quite remember, you can always remember to bring up the flowchart here by clicking either this button here or the tab button. Like we went over previously, from here you can see a left to right flowchart of all the different compositions in your project. And you can easily find the topmost composition just by going all the way over to the left. Click it and it'll take you right there. Now that you have the correct composition, you need to set a start and end time for your composition. If you don't, then it'll simply render out your entire work area. This might work for you, but there's also a really high chance that you'll only use a portion of the composition that you have. Rendering out the whole thing will give you unnecessary footage or leave a big dead space at the end. Depending on your export settings, this can add unnecessary time and disk space to your computer, so it's best to avoid it if possible. Bring your playhead to the start of the composition where you want your video to start. To set the endpoint, hit the B key. You can think of B as in beginning. Then go to the endpoint where you want your video to end and hit the N key. You can think of N for end, I guess. Great, now let's go over actually how to render. To get to your render settings, simply go to File, Export, Add to Render Queue. Or you can simply get there by having your timeline highlighted and then hit Control or Command M. From here you should have your render queue pop up and you can set the parameters for how you want your render to actually be carried out. Where I like to start is by simply hitting the blue name beside the output option and this will allow you to choose a name and location for you to export to. Name it something that will tell you in an instant what video file you're actually working with to distinguish it from other video files. Also I would suggest creating a folder within the project that you're going to be adding it to so that you don't have to search through your entire computer to find it. Next up let's go to render settings. This can totally be a matter of preference and just what your specific project needs. But if you're just beginning, we're going to run over some quick settings that will most likely be what you need. Make sure that quality is set up to best and that resolution is set to full. Unless you're using proxies, which you're probably not because we didn't go over it in this course, keep it at no proxies. Have effects and solo switches set to the current settings and make sure that all guides are set to off. And keep color depth at the current settings. Next, for time sampling, keep frame blending for check layers, field render off, motion blur for checked layers, and time span work area only. Use the composition frame rate that's been set, but if for some reason you know the specific frame rate you want and it's different from the project, then this is where you'd change that. But I would suggest if that's the case, it's best to have that done at the beginning of your project. Hit OK and we've got one less block of settings. Here in Output Module, don't worry about color management, we're just going to go over your main options. Format, I would choose QuickTime, but as you can see, there's a lot of different options. If you have a specific need for your project, feel free to research what would work best for your particular situation, but QuickTime is always a safe bet. Now let's go into more detail with formats. Go down to Format Options here, and under Video Codec, and we can see again like we had a lot of format options, we also have a lot of codec options for that format. Each codec is a particular program that compresses the data of your video in a slightly different way. There's a bunch of different options, and again, depending on your needs, you can research and see what would work best for your project needs. But again, a safe bet is always animation. This is what's called a lossless codec. So once it's selected, you can hit OK to go back. 
Keep post render action at none. Have included project links checked. For video output, have channel set to RGB. But if there's any parts of your project composition that are transparent, showing this checked box pattern in the background, then if you want it to actually end up being transparent, you'll need to make sure that alpha channel is also checked. If you don't, then when you export, it'll automatically fill in the transparency with a solid color, either black or white, depending on how your composition is set up. So to make sure that transparency is kept, you would choose under channels, RGB plus alpha. Keep depth at millions of colors and color at pre-multiplied, matted. Try not to resize or crop unless absolutely necessary and unless you have a firm understanding of what you're doing. And as for audio, chances are it won't be vital to your project as you'll probably be adding it back in in a different non-linear editor. But for now, just to be safe, keep it at default settings. And guys, that's it. Now, when you hit render, you can see the progression and its estimated output along this line here. And when it's finished, it'll be available where you originally specified for it to be sent to. And that's how you export in After Effects. But there's also another way of getting your project to where it needs to go that might be a little bit more attractive and flexible. If you're using Premiere Pro to compile your video and just using After Effects for one piece or one scene of it, you can actually let Premiere and After Effects talk to each other with what's called Dynamic Link. The first thing that you quickly want to note is the name of the composition that you have at the topmost part of your project. Basically, the main composition that every other composition sits inside of. You'll want to know this because you'll have to pull it up by name later on. Again, if you can't seem to find where it is, hit the tab button and look for the far leftmost composition. Next, open up Premiere and then find the After Effects project file on your computer. Now, you're just going to drag and drop it right into your Premiere Pro project window. And you should see that a new tab pops up. It's going to ask you for the composition that you want to import. And this is where you need to select the specific one. Because you looked it up earlier, you know what it is. So choose that composition, and now the final result is that your After Effects project is sitting right inside of your Premiere Pro project. If you drag and drop it into your Premiere Pro project, it'll require some rendering to play properly, but the great benefit of doing it this way is that if you end up going back and making any changes later on in After Effects, you won't have to re-export your video again. Adobe's dynamic linking system will automatically recognize that it's been changed, and After Effects will update your Premiere Pro project version to match. It's just that easy. So now you've officially integrated your After Effects project into your larger video. And when you find yourself doing another project in Premiere Pro, keep in mind that you can do the same process really quickly in reverse. You can take a video clip that you're working on in Premiere, or highlight a selection of clips, and then right click and go to replace with After Effects composition. This will send your selection from Premiere Pro so that you can work on it inside of After Effects. Guys, I hope this video has been helpful, and I hope that this entire course has been able to teach you more about how to work effectively inside of After Effects. If you guys like this video, or the entire course, feel free to share it with a fellow video editor friend. And as you keep learning and growing in After Effects, we'd highly encourage you to check out all of our other After Effects tutorials. We've got a huge number of helpful tutorials here at MotionArray.com, and you can find a link to all of those videos in the description below. But guys, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.